All right, we are exactly 21 days since we planted our potatoes, and as you can see, they are starting to come up over there. Let's get them a little zoom shot. They're doing pretty good. The wood behind them was just uh, protecting them from a late frost that we had. So the farmer's almanac says we're about one week out from our final frost. I don't believe we do have one more in us, but if we do, I have plenty of ground cover. So today we're going to plant our carrots. They do like to be planted when it's nice and cool. We've got our Danver halves that we talked about. We do have a couple different things to plant today, but it's a little bit early yet for the tomatoes. So we'll take a peek at those, see how they're doing, but they are going to stay right where they're at and keep coming inside at night. Now instead of trying to plant these itty bitties individually, I'm just going to dig out a trench and sprinkle them in. Now these rows like to be about 12 inches or so apart. Um, I'm actually going to have all my green beans here. We're going to get to that as soon as we get these planted. All this area in front of me is going to be woven in with a net to give my peas and beans something to grab onto and climb all the way up. Uh, last year by late summer we had a privacy screen from the entire uh, street in the side of our neighborhood just in beans and peas, so that was kind of fun. Carrots are very, very slow to germinate. It'll be probably 12 days before we actually see anything popping above the surface, so the key is to maintain patience. Have a little faith in yourself as a gardener. Out. the camera can pick it up but as I'm dropping them I can see where about they're landing you just want to give them about an inch and a half or so of space if you drop two that's all right I planted my carrots last year too close together and then when I pulled them up they were actually twisted together it's kind of cool I might still have a picture of that all kinds of them in there now. Get my water in for good luck. It is up there. It is almost a shame to unravel this. It's so perfect. It'll never be that perfect again. Well. Yeah. Okay, so I have some paracord here. I do this every year. String it from one to the other. This is my anchor. And uh, the wall is because we have a new puppy and he wants to just come out the door and go blasting straight through my garden to go adventure the unknown. And uh, we're trying to discourage him. That's also why we have the high visibility line so that once we leave all this in, hopefully he'll come out and just screw it right to the side and it won't catch him like a 30 pound fly. We'll see. <laughs>
If you've ever in your life made a fishing net or a dream catcher, where you're gonna follow the same pattern. So basically, you're just gonna make your net, or I'm sorry, you're not in the very middle of the first loop that you made and you're just gonna stagger them all the way across. And we're going to do that about 200 times. Okay, so I'm just now realizing that I did this entire thing backwards, and I should have definitely planted my carrots second so that I could actually work in this area. Um, but we're gonna make do with it. Sometimes I just, you know, 75 degrees, you get really excited. But uh, why did I not bring my net all the way down to the ground? Well, I don't want the string to rot. I also don't want little things getting at it. And So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make leaders. Each of these stakes is gonna have couple feet of this line tied to it. It's gonna go way down deep in the ground next to each plant and it's gonna guide it up to the nearest uh, nearest loop. Let's get these guys in the ground. They're already a little bit too big for their cups so they're looking forward to this and so am I. 